Awesome. Cool. All right. So welcome mm -hmm. to Preston's home and to this Q and A with with Preston and myself, Ryan Streeter, for the Bright Lights of Denver podcast. Um, we're so happy to have you here. And basically, what we're going to do is Preston and I are just going to ask each other a few questions, just so you all can get to know us a little bit better. And then we'll open up the floor to you. I'm sure you have many questions about what we've discovered in the podcast and maybe, uh, you know, sort of where things go from here. And so we know it's kind of been a wild ride at this point. And uh, we ourselves have many questions that we're still trying to answer. So um, you want to start off with the Yeah, I wrote the, them the down. friendly question. I'm ready. Cool. Okay. So this so is something that as your best friend, I feel like I should know, but I was thinking about it. I actually don't know. Mm. Um, you know, you're a writer, you love all that kind of stuff. What's your favorite poem? Ooh, what is my favorite poem? That's a great question. Um, man, I have a lot of poems that I really enjoy. Um, if by Rudyard Kipling, I would say. Uh, it's a, a poem that I read when I was really young, when I was a young man. Uh, and it's about basically having perseverance in the world as a young man. <laughs> so uh, that's a, a poem that I've always really loved. Um, I've always really loved um, Dream Deferred. That's always, uh, that's a poem that's always meant a lot to me. I actually quote that poem a lot in many of my writings in different ways, but I think a lot about like equity and the dreams a lot of people have for themselves and many that people aren't able to realize unfortunately so um thanks it's a good question awesome yeah wow. i love i love talking about talking about my favorite poems i'll have to look up those poems yeah well, i'm happy to send them to you happy to <laughs> send them to do. you yeah, yeah yeah um okay another question for you ryan yeah where is a bucket list travel destination that you would love to go to Ooh, bucket list travel destination you know, I would probably have to, you know, a lot of people have been there. I have never been to Italy before. <gasps> yeah. So yeah. that's probably in the top three. Okay. And then like, I know a bunch of friends who have like gone to like Fiji and stuff. And like, I always see like all the snorkeling and those clear waters. And I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be in this kind of place. Yeah, so. I dig it. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. Yeah. What is one of your favorite memories of the two of us? Ooh, I mean, besides getting drunk outside of a Beyonce concert. Oh, with some... oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes. Let's see here. Hmm. It was that one time where you and I went hiking up at Chief Hosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just up there and we got super lost. Yeah. <laughs> and it started to rain. Just like it's raining kind of like now. today, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, you know, going into panic mode, thinking like we've got to get down this mountain, like it's going to start lightning, we're going to die up here, um, and so that was um, the first time that I realized that you are a good person to have around in crises because you just know how to be calm, cool, and collected, and it's like I don't even need to take annex when uh when you're around you just you're, you just make sure that everything is all good so that was that was a definite definite solidifying our our friendship there cool appreciate that yeah. um since you did too i'll do too yes uh what is a moment that you've had uh where i've been around where i've recorded something maybe where you were annoyed at first but like after the fact you're like oh i'm actually really happy that he recorded that Oh my gosh. I feel like you recorded everything in college. Yeah. It was, you were, he was, Brian was just that annoying kid who <laughs> always like had his camera at, you know, like in, um, in Harry Potter where it's, um, oh, I can't remember that little kid's name. He's like obsessed with Harry and he's always like taking this. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. that was, that was you not in quite in so much of an annoying way, but sometimes, but I think there was one night where we were supposed to go um, to some party and it ended up like not happening. And we ended up just like hanging out with a group of friends. Um, I think Taylor might've been there too. Yeah, I And think was. we ended up just hanging out at the house and you like took a bunch of pictures and recorded a lot of our conversations. Cause we ended up getting into kind of some like deep friendship stuff. And 
being able to like look back on that now, that was such a wonderful night. Yeah. And I'm really glad that we have documentation of it. Yeah. So thanks for documenting things. I try. Mm. Just like Rita Skeeter, you know, just like <laughs> floating quill. Speaking of documentation, so we've had lots of, you know, deals with well, especially for you learning about journalism and wanting to get into that. So I wonder over the past year, how have you seen journalism change? Do you think it's going in a better direction? What do you think it should be going in? Mm, that's a very it's a loaded question in different ways. <laughs> um, a brief answer. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, over the last four years, uh, between 2016 and 2020, obviously we had a different president of the United States and despite uh, the difficulties of that time for a lot of people, it was actually kind of a, a boon for the journalism world in many ways, you know, like uh, NYT, all these big outlets were getting more subscriptions in one or two years than they had had in the last decade. And so it's kind of strange to think about, you know, it's like there's the old adage of journalism, like if it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. And so like the thing I've been thinking a lot about is like, how do how do journalists keep the communities that they work in engaged and wanting to know about the news without necessarily always having to do like all this kind of doom and gloom stuff. And so I'm not sure like what the, the numbers look like over the last year, but I know that like a lot of analysts have said, are we going to have a decline of the, you know, the, the boom that was over the last four years? Um, and maybe I'm not sure. Um, but I think that a lot of journalists were overworked for sure over the last four years and really just burning the candle at all seven ends and i just hope that uh there's a there's a way for people to find a little bit more balance in their life and that like journalism also has become a lot more fractured you know like there's not just like one outlet or people like yeah i get all my news from this place or that place it's like when you look at like substack or the growth of like journalist newsletters it's like a lot of people are like i like this journalist i like you know, um, HCR, for example, Anna Cox Richardson, like, um, or Heather, Heather, um, I forget her first name, but, uh, uh, yeah, we just look at individual people. We're like, I like their ideas, like they're the right. So I'm going to follow them. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so if I, I've, 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 I've thought about this for a while, but, um, if you had to make your own podcast about something that wasn't the bright lights mm. what the, what would your podcast be about hmm that's a great question i've been really interested well and i think i'm not alone in this that a lot of people during the pandemic you had a lot of time on your hands and you wanted to kind of try something new I, ooh, okay I'm, I'm actually getting a good idea right now because i was gonna say I, I really got into baking during the pandemic and we didn't like, <laughs> you know like baking like i tried to bake my own pie crust and it was awful it was it did not turn out well at all i had to throw it away <laughs> but then i you know kept trying and doing new things and eventually got to the point where i could make my own pie crust and that was awesome so at first i was going to say baking like you know talking about different you know ways i don't know we're all obsessed with like the great british bake off and stuff like that but, right. but then i just got this idea of how like you did a podcast of what did people learn during the pandemic? Like mm -hmm. what was something that you did or didn't do before the pandemic learned during it and like mastered or maybe not so much, but you know, enjoy now. So I love that. I'm going to be people about that. Cool. Maybe I'll start another podcast about that. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Okay. I've got another question for you. Speaking of the pandemic, what has been one of the harder things for you? Um, just in general just, well during the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> okay. listen, well, we don't need to go into <laughs> yeah listen things in the life of ryan streeter oh, yeah. um i mean there have been a lot of hard things but i would say just like the isolation from community uh it's hard to see when people are struggling or they need you know a friend and like i just started seeing people for the first time in person just yeah. over the last couple of weeks you yeah. know and like to be able to actually be physically with people you you like i think you rationalize to yourself because like you know i connect with people over zoom and over this and that and it's like when you get to really physicalize your affection and you're caring for someone it really hits you in a different way you know yeah. kind of forgot how <laughs> impactful that was yeah. um all right i'm gonna ask you one last question and then uh I want to turn it over to the people um what has been the most surprising 
aspect of this podcast. Besides the obvious. <laughs> well, yeah, gosh. Um, honestly, the support. Yeah. You know, like, and that's partially, you know, why we're here right now and doing this. It, when you were like, oh, I want to start a podcast, you know, and I was like, okay, that's fine. You do your thing, like, about Denver. That's awesome. We'll learn some cool stuff about Denver. I was excited to listen to it. But what it's turned into has really shown me just like a different side of community of Denver that I didn't necessarily, I mean, you're, you're in, especially with the pandemic, we were in our little bubbles, you know, you don't go outside of that very often. You kind of, I was like avoiding people. Um, so I'm just amazed. Um, and so grateful, really, really honestly grateful to all of you who are here today and to the hundreds of people who have already listened to the podcast. Um, I just think that's so cool. And I really appreciate people's interest in wanting to help us find Taylor and people being interested. So um, I would not have guessed that. <laughs> no, but, you know, I just didn't think that people would be into it, but um, I'm really glad they are. Yes. I'm happy that y'all are here. So. Awesome. Cool. And with that, we are going to, uh, I think, yeah, we, we should just give, you know, maybe uh, an overview of kind of, how we got here and then we're going to open it up to questions um so i i would hope assume that uh you've heard the first couple of episodes but just a brief overview of, of how we got here i had written an article that went viral about the millennials moving to denver and as we know denver is a city that's been changing quite profoundly over the last several years and i think this profound change is going to continue over the next several years and i was like i really want to try to document this change and people seemed really interested in it um, so we met up with Taylor, had a great meal at Linger, was really excited to be back. And then we just didn't hear from Taylor again. Um, saw some selfies that he took, a message, but like didn't actually see him. And so we're just trying to figure out, you know, what happened and we have our own theories. Uh, so we, at the same time, we've been learning about the history of Denver, the architecture, uh, and it's just interesting how these two things seem to be kind of intersecting more and more um so yeah that's where we're at now and we've you know we've heard some really great uh we've had some great outreach from the community in emails and dms and all the things and so yeah that's uh where we're at now do you want to add anything to that? yeah um we we've been to taylor's house tried to find um any you know just see if there was anything that could have told us more um didn't really get too much from that except for the fact that he you know had been there and it's been it's kind of mysterious that he's not anymore because his keys were there his car bike was all still at his house and the back door was unlocked which was a little bit unnerving um and we found a notepad that it's been um well this is a mystery really. mystery yeah i don't really know what to do with it yeah um but other than that i mean we know he was kind of last seen at this at the cruise room um at the oxford hotel and we don't really have a timeline after that. So um, that's kind of what we're, we're working with. Yes. Cool. So we would love to turn it over to all of you. Uh, if you have some questions that you'd like to ask of us, of the case, of the process of making all of this, um, have at it, please. And you can either raise your hand or ask it in the chat. Yeah, you can also type it in the chat if you don't want to share it verbally. Is that Colin? I have a question. Yeah. I love your podcast. I think it's a great idea and I'm learning so much from it. So thank you for making it. Um, obviously, things have taken a turn. Um, but I have a question about the legal pad that you found. Yeah. Um, and you, sh and you shared that. Um, so have you guys come any closer to figuring out what these numbers um, on his legal pad may mean yet or anything else on that notepad for that matter? So, I mean, there's, there's a few things that we have actually been um, kind of talking about recently um, that will come out in probably the next episode. Um, 
and things that we're definitely not sure at. So I will say, I do think that there's something there with the legal pad, um, potentially. There's obviously no solid answers yet, um, unfortunately, but we've been talking with someone who we think might be able to help a little bit, um, but we'll see. Um, I think it just might take some more time and some more research on our end um, to kind of see what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, at first when I looked at it, I was like, are these maybe area codes or zip codes or something like that? But that didn't really, that didn't really pan out. But yeah, so uh, we have yeah a couple of leads, a couple of people to talk to to learn more information. In terms of other things on the legal pad, I mean, I was trying to make head or tail of what was on there. I mean, there was literally a garden plan. <laughs> there was just like random drawings. And so it just seemed like when Taylor wrote down those numbers, it must have very much been like in a hurry or just like finding whatever, because like the things on the notepad didn't really seem to have that much connection with each other. It was like, you know, when you're running around your house, you're like, oh, I have to write this down and you just yeah. pull out like an envelope or something. That's what it felt like to me where I was like, yeah. I don't know how this like stick figure has anything to do with these numbers. Well, but. And Taylor's always like taking notes. Like yeah. Taylor's got like a you know notebook with him. He's always like sketching or yeah. drawing or doing something with paper. And so, you know, it could be something, but on the other hand, like, could just be something weird in Taylor's mind that he was like, oh, these numbers are, I don't know, they use playing Sudoku or something. Who knows? Yeah, that's the tough thing to figure out when someone's missing like this. You want to like look into everything and yeah. read it too much to, to everything almost. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. hard because, you know, regardless of how well you know someone, you can't actually be in their mind, you know? So it's like, I don't, I have no idea what mind state he was in when he was writing these things. So I think right. that's the part. Um, and just a final question for me. Um, Taylor had a book you guys found um, in his bedroom about D.B. Cooper. Um, is that anything he mentioned to you guys, like when that he's reading this book before he went missing, did he talk about this book at all to you guys or, or anything else uh, for that matter that was on his mind? Did he mention to you guys before he went missing um, besides the fact that someone was following him potentially. Um, was there anything that you guys maybe can recall um, yeah. that he was talking about maybe more often than not? So he never mentioned the book to me. Um, just to give any future listeners or anyone here some context, if you don't know who D.B. Cooper is, I think it was in the 70s, I want to say. Uh, there was a guy who basically got on a plane and he told the flight attendants that he had a bomb on him and that if they didn't uh, basically answer a list of demands that he would, uh, you know, ignite to said bomb. And so they flew to, I think it was somewhere near Seattle, and he demanded all this money and a bunch of life jackets. And so they gave him the money, the life jackets, the plane got back in the air and he said that they wanted to take him to Mexico. But the pilot was like, we can't take you directly to Mexico because it's too far. So we have to stop and fuel somewhere. And so uh, they were going to stop in a couple of different places. Um, they had a couple different options, uh, but they, you know, it was essentially a trap. They had the feds and all these people waiting for him. And so D.B. Cooper basically just jumped off the plane at some point and nobody knows what happened to him after that. Um, I would go look it up. It's a very fascinating story. Um, it's yeah, Taylor never mentioned the book to me. I've always found the story to be fascinating, especially as a journalist. I love, you know, mystery and trying to find the facts. Um, so I would love I would love to to talk with him about it at some point. Um, but no, he never mentioned that he was reading it or that he even had interest in stuff like that. So Taylor reads like three books a month, at least, and yeah. sometimes more. And he's just constantly going through all these books. And so you know, I, maybe he's on an island somewhere that he jumped out of a plane and just chilling. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess that would maybe be ideal to know that, you know, but we just want to know what happened. But I don't think that that, I don't think he's taking any clue, any cues from D.B. Cooper um, to put it that way. Yeah. 
and really the only thing he talked about was that he thought was being he was being followed, which you know at the time I made jokes about because um, that's just kind of you know you don't we would never actually want that to happen, and so you think that someone's like like oh you're just being paranoid you know but um, I wish now that I would have paid a little more attention to that and maybe listen to him a little bit more um, when he was talking about it. I mean, I remember him talking about the black Mercedes um, and then his neighbor, Nate mentioned um, seeing the black Mercedes around there as well. So that is something that is, we're trying to find out more about, but you know, how do you, how do you figure that out? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I've got. He, was he? Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> are, we, are we all talking at once now? <laughs> uh, no, no. Yeah, no. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, sorry. Also, I just took a shower before this, so I'm just going to stay off camera. Um, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you think you need to report him as a missing person to the police? Um. So we have actually. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, great. Great question. And I don't know, I, I don't, we're trying not to, you know, talk, you know, the, the police can't tell us that much, unfortunately. Right. Also, especially because we're not family. Um, and I yeah. have been trying to, I've been in contact with his parents um, who have also been in contact with the police. And, you know, it seems like they're doing what they need to do, um, trying to figure out some things. But um, as of right now, we do not have any firm updates from the police, but I know that they're looking into it. So, um, got it. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. But, yeah. Thanks for the question. <laughs> um, we also had a question in the chat from Bard. Yeah. The question is, was Taylor a well-liked professor? He was. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor, I would have loved to have a professor like Taylor in college. He was like the cool professor that you could, you know, like if you're running late on an assignment, he could he'd just be like, Hey, like, just get it in. It's okay. Yeah, and also like Taylor is still like, he's very young for a professor, you know, he's in his early 30s. And so like, you know, he's not some gray hair that is uh, <laughs> disconnected from what's going on. So I think the students also like talking with him about like current events and, yeah. and social media and QR codes and all the things, you know, so he's a very knowledgeable guy. He's um, so passionate yeah. about what he teaches, you know, he, he really loves architecture. I know he loves to teach people about it. Um, I mean, he, he could talk about it for hours. <laughs> yeah. I would a lot of times tune him out because uh, it's like, okay, I, I got it. You like architecture? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, well, yeah. professors should be passionate about yeah. whatever they're studying Absolutely. So, and teaching. So. Are there any other questions? Um, you might be muted, Fran. I think you are muted. Let's see. You could uh, do type I type it in the chat if you can. I don't know if we can. Un oh, yeah, I don't tech support can. Oh, okay. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. I, I, I'm sorry. I lost the, the screen and the audio at the same time. So ah, <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Um, have you considered um, talking to his, where he works at the university? Have they um, done any, uh, do they know that you can't find him? Is this, you know, maybe something that he does or maybe he got sent on an assignment or something? Um, that's a, a great question. So uh, the university does know. Um, I think one of the things that the police were talking um, about or I, I, you know, kind of heard mentioned was that they are, um, looking in to see if anybody at the university wasn't a fan, wasn't a fan of Taylor, um, which, you know, like we just kind of talked about, he was pretty well liked, but um, I think they were trying to look into that and just see if there was anyone who, any students who, you know, maybe he gave them a bad grade and so they wanted to, you know, whatever. So they were looking into that. I don't think anything has come up. Um, and I mean, we, we haven't really been in contact with anyone from the university per se, but they are aware of this. Um, I don't think it was any sort of assignment um, as far as we know, you know, yeah. they're being super secretive about it, in which case. Yeah, I don't know which professors have know. projects that are so secretive, yeah. maybe unless you're working with like the 
science department or something. But yeah, his students know as well. I know uh, I'm aware that some of them have been posting about it on social media, um, especially after we filed the missing persons report. So, I mean, at first they just thought it was funny because they didn't have to go to class and, you know, students are always excited about that. But after like a couple of days passed, they, they were like, oh, this is actually pretty serious. And so um, it's been cool to see, you know, even his students and, and the young people uh, rallying around him to try to find him as well. Um, but, you know, with institutions, it's always hard, whether working with the university, the police, et cetera, because, you know, they're always trying to maintain privacy while at the same time trying to find someone. And so there's only so much that they can tell friends and colleagues about like a case or, or what's going on. So yeah. frustrating. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it is. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, and um, what, one of the interviews you did, and I think it was in the last, your last podcast, there was um, a mention of that if, if, if a building had to be, um, or if someone wanted to tear down a building, they yeah. had to go through a certain commission to get permission to do that. And then I was thinking about your also, you also uh, are looking at historical buildings um, that you're trying to preserve. And I was just wondering if there's something there, maybe somebody was, maybe there's a building somebody wants torn down for their own reasons. Um, and yet maybe it's a historical building that um, maybe Taylor's input wouldn't have been helpful on if you were trying to tear a building down. I don't know. I just, I started thinking, how could, how could him working with you um, maybe have something to do with his disappearance. So I just started thinking about buildings coming down and buildings being preserved. Is there a connection? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I think it's definitely something that we'll have to look into more. I haven't, I haven't thought about it super, super deeply, but that's not a, a bad angle. I mean, you know, everybody knows how commercially contentious uh, real estate and buildings can be. And mm -hmm. so even if you're involved in some way or another, I, I don't know to what extent Taylor is involved in those capacities. But um, when you're involved, you can definitely get yourself into some strange situations. I mean, I know there are a lot of uh, conversations we have here in Denver about like, you know, even our own local government and their relationships with developers and, and, and commercial interests. And so um, definitely, yeah, definitely something to yeah, I hadn't necessarily thought about it in that aspect of like something that's being torn down and something to preserve um, because I had been trying to see if, if there was some sort of connection between like this, this sort of historical architecture and Taylor because he was so passionate about that um, and really loves preservation and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but no, you bring up actually a really good point. I think that's something that I definitely want to ask some more questions about and we see, I don't know. Um, I, would, I would hope that, you know, people wouldn't be rude enough to- <laughs> Yeah, crazy. Hurt someone over something like this. Like that's just like, that is so far from like, you know, day to day, well, my day to day life personally that I don't. Yeah, same. I would yeah. hope not, but um, yeah, that's something to think about for sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. Thank, thanks for the taking the questions, and I hope you are going to let us know when you find her, if you find when you find Taylor. Please let us know in your podcast. Yeah, when we find them, we will definitely. Yeah. Thank, you, definitely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. much. Are there any final questions out there in the? In the form. All right, going. I got a. Oh. oh, oh no, yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> There's somebody. Okay, um, I just thought of another one. Um, was there any like projects that were stressing him out? Um, maybe that he was working on. Um, you know, in our day-to-day -day work, we're always stressed about something. Was there anything specific he was talking about that maybe was stressing him, him out? Maybe a project that he was working on. Um, that you guys can recall or anything like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, that last question just kind of got me thinking of that. Yeah. We, um, we talked to someone recently 
who I think will be a part of the next, I don't think will be a part of the next one. Yeah. Um, that mentioned a project, um, but we haven't really been able to find anything specific out on it. It's something that we definitely need to flush out more and do some more um, digging about, but even then it wasn't necessarily, at least that I can tell right now, it was, you know, just Taylor had so many projects, so many things that were just kind of, you know, in the works. But um, I think, I think we're, I don't know if we're onto anything or not, but um, the person we talked to yesterday who um, y'all will hear in this next episode mentioned something that Taylor was working on that I, I would like to look more into, um, so. Yeah, and like Preston said, like Taylor had his hands dipped in so many projects. I mean, he he was very fun to be around and super chill, but he was like very very busy, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I would that wouldn't really I don't know him well enough to be honest to be able to tell a difference between a normal level of stress for Taylor and doing seventeen projects <laughs> versus uh, unusual level of stress. So uh, yeah. I'm not really sure on that one. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely one of those people that hides his stress well yes, for the most part well. even well. if he is having all of this craziness around him but he was always doing something like you know always on calls always sending emails about lots of different things and i don't know i i, I wish i would have maybe paid a little more attention to things that he was talking about <laughs> but um yeah that's a I, I think that is a direction that we're gonna maybe look into more I don't know if anything's going to come of it or not, but I mean, as of right, like right now, we're just trying to get whatever we can um, and find out whatever information is out there. Yeah. And I mean, I was telling, I was telling press just a few days ago, I was like, I don't know, like Taylor, maybe he got so overwhelmed that he just kind of had to hit the eject button. You know, I've had friends do that where they just, they get so overwhelmed that they just leave without telling anyone. Um, and so I was like, he's doing so many things. It's very possible that that could have been the case. And so. It's hard to really, it's hard to really know what his, again, what his mindset was. Um, but I hope that we will have more answers soon. That is for sure. Thanks. Yeah, thank you all for the great questions. Um, we will keep you updated. Um, we'll be having another Q&A on June 30th, uh, the last day of the month. And I hope that we will know a lot more. Um, we'll have a, a couple more episodes under our belt and, and some more interviews and hopefully some more leads. So we hope that you all will tune in and that we'll all have a lot more information to discuss and maybe even Taylor with us. I don't know. That would be, oh, that would be awesome. But it. maybe it's just uh, wishful thinking. But um, I do hope that we'll, we'll have a lot more of a clearer picture the next time we all chat. All righty. Well, any final words? Um, just thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for myself and also um, Taylor's parents, family. Um, we can't. The Denver folks. police, like the detective we've been working with. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can't thank you folks enough for um, supporting and giving us some things to think about and maybe look into more. And um, please just, yeah, keep keep up keep up with the podcast um you can follow us on instagram and um you know at bright lights denver if you're on the socials yep <laughs> you can find us there so. um yeah and then you know we just yeah thank you that's really yeah that's really we'll good. just we're gonna do our best to keep looking yeah uh, and to keep digging so that is our commitment to you mm -hmm. so thank you all so much and have a great rest of your saturday and, and sunday enjoy juneteenth enjoy father's day Enjoy all the things and uh, until next time.